So, hello, dear fellows and guests. I'm going to talk about silicon photonics for data centers. Uh, this work is done in collaboration with my lab members. Imagine a data center. This is a large collection of computers placed in a huge warehouse aimed, uh, aimed to provide enormous amount of file storage and powerful processing capabilities. Facebook will use such a data center to store all your user data, but also to process it, update it, and change it each time you like or, or post something. Amazon also has data centers, but they use them to rent out part of them to companies which can't afford them, but have big data sets to analyze and to mine. Uh, <laughs> Uh, those data centers, because we don't, uh, the computers within them are not only used for storage, but they also used for processing, they have to be able to communicate with each other. We can't interconnect each computer with each other, but instead we use to create networks. A network is facilitated by switches, and uh, they route the, the, the traffic from one node to another. Currently, those switches are electrical. They consume lots of power, and they don't scale well. We can't have too many nodes on them. So what we think is a solution is to use optics. Optical communications has revolutionized the world of telecom. However, the optical components are pretty bulky, slow, expensive, and power inefficient. So we need to devise, to devise new components, which are small, maybe can be integrated within the servers, which are fast, nanoseconds, which are relatively cheap if we have to put this in every computer, and they have to be also power efficient. The solution for this is silicon photonics, what we see. The what is silicon photonics? This is the technology which enables light to propagate on in silicon waveguides, but also the devices with which allows us to manipulate light on the nanoscale. Why it is good? Well, it uses silicon, which is one of the very well-known and extensively studied abundant material. The devices needed for silicon photonics are made with the same technology used to make computer chips. This makes them that they are cheap to produce in mass volumes. There is lots of companies which work in this area, there are lots of experts and expertise who know how to do it. And also, they are small size. So this is an example of a silicon photonic wafer. It consists of a bulk silicon, glass, and then the, 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 the waveguide, the silicon waveguide, with typical dimensions 200 and 450 nanometers. Um, we need, if we want to, to insert, to couple light into it, we need to place an optical fiber very, clo very close to it. Because the silicon is uh, not that transparent as the glass or air around it, the light remains confined in this waveguide. So now, so what did we can put light in those small waveguides? Well, we can also create other structures which can manipulate this light. For example, if we place a small ring next to the waveguide, in most of the time, nothing will happen. The power which enters into the waveguide will also exit. However, if the ring is on resonance, meaning that integer number of wavelengths can, can fit in the circumference of the ring times the refractive index, then the entering light which propagates on the waveguide is going to jump in the ring and start to circulate there, and nothing will come out. Uh, the refractive index is a property of material which we can, in fact, change by, for example, inserting more electrons into it. So if we observe what's happening uh, on the output, we can see that, in fact, when, when the ring is off resonance, the power will be on, will be on the output, and when the ring is off resonance, we'll see zero, which, in fact, uh, in fact represents modulating data on the light signal. Such devices have been manufactured, this is a picture of an actually manufactured device, where the ring is realized as a diode, 
where diodes, those are the small components with which nowadays computers are made. And by controlling the voltage of light on this diode, we can control the electrons. And in fact, we can modulate di data in this way. So since it was seen that those micro rings and this technology is not just something for research, but we can actually produce something in the real world, the industry became interested in, it, in this. So what's the path? Uh, in the early 90s, in the 90s somewhere, in fact, all the fundamental discoveries about these silicon technologies were made. Uh, in the early 2000s, different devices like modulators, but also other devices like um, filters, photodetectors, lasers were developed and demonstrated. And since a few years, there are lots of companies, big and small, which try to bring this technology to the market. There are also foundry services, like in, in Singapore, in Belgium, where you can go and for $3,000 you can have 10 modulators for research purposes. So what I'm doing here in Colombia, I'm studying silicon photonic switches. So if next to the ring we place a second wave guide, when the ring is on resonance, the light will not stay here to circulate, but will switch to the other wave guide. So in this way, in fact, we can control the spatial direction of light. So we cannot use, only use it for modulation, but also for switching. Because the ring can, have, uh, can be on resonance with many wavelengths, in fact, we can switch many wavelengths simultaneously. We have, we have such a device. It was manufactured by somebody else. But we have this device in the lab. It has a micro ring of... Uh, uh, eight microns, four quarts, and I have done some measurements on it. Um, so for example, the blue line here is what's measured on true port, and the orange line is what is measured on the drop port. Oops. Oh. Okay. Uh, so at the operating wavelength, we can see that the blue line, there is almost nothing coming out on the true port, but everything is on the drop port. If we apply small voltage, so one volt, for example, the resonance shifts, and now the red line represents the true port and the purple one the drop port. So we can see that now all the power will be, go will be going to, the, to this port, to the true port, and very little will go to the drop port. So this is a photo of uh, the actual device here. <coughs> These are the optical fibers. This is a bundle of optical fibers. This is the coupler, and those metallic pads and with electrical wires, with which, which we use for, to, for the active control of the ring. So I, only, I not only do the, uh, experiments, I also do theory most of the time. So I have developed a model for this simple ring, which includes the size of the ring, the distance between the ring and the waveguides, the losses in the ring, and uh, as we can see, my theoretical model matches pretty well with the experimental spectra. So the, blue, the, the black line here is the theory. So we have two ports. This means that we have four ports. This means that in fact, we can simultaneously switch two signals. However, for example, if we want to switch the signal from port one to port two, part of it will leak out to port four. If we want simultaneously to guide a signal from port three to port four, this leaked part is going to interfere with the, and introduce noise, undesired noise in the signal. We have measured this effect. You can see here an eye diagram, which uh, shows the levels of one and zeros. So this is what our initial signal looks like. And this here is when we have uh, measured it on port two provided that we have also a second signal. So to avoid this crosstalk effect, um, we have studied uh, uh, those, uh, those switch switching elements with uh, two rings. Uh, in this way, when the signal is, uh, when the, the two rings are on resonance with the, with the signal, then it's going to be in drop state. And when the two rings are off resonance, then they're going to go to the different ports. So what we found is in, that in this case, there is no 
crosstalk for specific optimal parameters. Now that we can, uh, now that we know that uh, we can model those elements, we can create larger switch fabrics and we can do more ports. So I have, uh, my time is almost over, but this is basically our vision of what we can do and we can place those switches in the, our large data centers. As a conclusion, silicon photonics is a very promising technology to provide uh, low cost, high volume, energy efficient network components. Silicon photonic switches, which are needed for the networking arch architecture have been demonstrated, analyzed, especially in the last two years, and are a step closer to adoption in data centers. <laughs>